Hello YouTube friends. Welcome to the last homely house. Welcome to the last homely house on the last day of 2022. It's New Year's Eve and I want to spend some time sewing with you tonight but also I'd like to revisit some of the highlights of this channel from the last 12 months. Now if you're new here I'm Kate. I live in a little cottage in the north of England. I like to sew mostly. I like to cook sometimes or I love to be outside uh, in the garden when I get the chance. It's really cold at the moment. Uh, the ground is frozen so there's no planting of trees going on which is what I hoped we might be able to do uh, at this time of year. So what I'm going to do for the next bit while is uh, stitch on Agnes's quilt. Now this quilt has been on the go for over three years now and uh, what I'm doing now I'm at the stage where I'm hand quilting it and I'm really pleased to be doing this. I mean I'm enjoying the pattern I've chosen. Um, it's an all over grid design and when I first started doing it I thought that maybe the grid was a little bit too close together but actually now that I'm doing it I really like how intense it looks and so I'm going to stitch on this quilt and we're going to talk about some of the things that have been going on here on the channel for the past 12 months. Buckle up, here we go. Now I've gone old school and made a list. with a pencil and a piece of paper <laughs> so that I can tell you which clips there are coming up. So the first clip, I'm not sewing am I? Let me get on with some sewing because that's the plan is that I'm going to sew and you're going to look at clips. But I think as I'm sewing on this the very first thing we should look at is where this was a year ago because I I often do, I have done for the past couple of years, a live stream on New Year's Eve. And today I'm doing a not live stream on New Year's Eve. But last New Year I was stitching on this quilt. Uh, I was stitching the, the individual pieces onto the bigger quilt. And so that might be a good place to start. All the progress that's been going on with Agnes's quilt this last year to get it to this point now. But the golden ratio is something that I learned about from a good friend of mine, Sarah, a few years ago, who was making a quilt. And uh, she said, I'm using these dimensions because then it will just look right. So I measured the width of this quilt and then I put the, that width into the formula, which calculates then how wide it needs to be. And by doing that, it told me that I needed it to be 10 inches longer in order to fit in with this lovely ratio. So I've got a cup of tea on a little table beside me here and I've got my unpicker and my specs. Now, I'm just going to start anywhere. As long as I leave all the edge ones in, I can start anywhere. But I'm going to do it systematically. I'll start in the middle and work outwards. And it's really, really simple. The way that I've basted these hexagons means that I loosen the first couple of stitches and like that, and then pull out the thread. And then I just get my finger underneath it and out comes the hexagon, like so. And I'll put those in there. Now that I've finished these and I've decided to do this quilting pattern, let's get Agnes's quilt off the board. Oh, I've been waiting for this moment for a long time. And so it begins. I'm going to start in the middle and stitch my way along and then turn it round and stitch the other way. So let's make a 
start. With this grid pattern, I'm using a clover chalk pen, pencil, pen, pencil, what's it called? Clover, it's just called a clover chalk pencil, I guess. It's really great, I like it a lot. It transfers a little tiny bit of chalk to the fabric, and as you're coming along and stitching, it just disappears under your hand, and it's, it gives you enough of a line to be able to see what you're doing. And so this grid, I'm just stitching right through this. Now I could eyeball it, I know I could, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm going to follow my chalk line because I think that if I got this even a little bit out, it would be very noticeable. Now I'm quilting it in this lovely Aurifil cotton, which is uh, Aurifil 12 and it's number... I can't find it. <laughs> oh, here it is. It's on this end. Just in case you're interested, it's 2725. And I bought three of these so that I wouldn't run out of them when I was doing this because I wanted to do them all in the same colour blue. So that's what I'm doing. I've got my um, bits and pieces here. I've got my needles here in this pin cushion, uh, spare ones. I've got one here. My scissors, my chalk pen and my ruler. But that's all I need because then I'm going to get on then and quilt this. Now, let's get myself sorted. I've done all the long runs this way, all of them. It took me quite a while to do that. I actually timed how long it took me to do one of the long runs. I think it was about 20 minutes to do one long run. And then I timed how long it was to do the short runs and they're about nine minutes. And so, but I've got lots and lots and lots still to do. <laughs> and this is the way I do it. I just um, dig down till I find the table. I've got my mat underneath me on the table and I'm just doing nice sizable stitches. They're not massive stitches, but they're not tiny quilting stitches either. They're just a lovely running stitch. And I just do one at a time. And I dig down so that I can feel the table below me or the or the, the mat below me. I'm sure it's not very good for your needle point. However, that's how I like to do it. Uh, I don't th I don't think it's the right way. I don't think it's the wrong way. It's just the way I like to do it. And that little chalk line just stays there long enough for me to be able to follow it. Now, on the short runs here, I'm cutting the thread the right width so there's nowhere to join. On the long runs I was doing it in two runs and joining that by burying the knot inside the quilt. You know how to do that. So Agnes's quilt then. It looks like there's going to be a finish on this quite soon. <laughs> and Agnes now has her own bedroom at Grandma's and this quilt is going to be on the bed in that room. There's another quilt on there at the moment. Uh, it's a nice quilt, a blue and green one, but this one is going to take its place. So I'm really pleased about that. So I've got to move this along slightly without moving you guys. Or move me. What shall I do? Move me, move you. Let's see how we go. But it's been quite a year here at the last homely house. And so I think possibly we'll have a look at another clip Let's have a look down the list and see what we should have. OK, ah, yes, maybe we should uh, have a look at that one. Because in my kitchen, I've got uh, four chairs. I made two of them ages ago, like two or three years ago. But this year I made two more. And the first two were painted a sort of acid yellow, almost lime green. And the second two were painted pink and I made patchwork cushions and uh, chair backs 
to go on them and the whole kitchen now looks absolutely lovely. It looks as though they were all made at the same time because I made them in the same way and I really, really enjoyed finishing off that little chair project. So let's have a look at that, shall we? Well, here they are in all their glory, all finished and a set of four. I'm really pleased with them. And I'll tell you about them one at a time. So I think the first one, yes, I think this might have been the first one I finished. And this one is a K facet red, uh, pink and green checkerboard and a nice green back there. This one's probably been finished a couple of years and so this cushion pad's nice and flat uh, like that. So that's a good one, the yellow one, the yellow one there. So this one is very red indeed. So look at this one. <laughs> this has got beautiful reds and pinks and the back of this one is pieced as well so that when you see through the back of the chair it looks kind of interesting too. And this one's beautiful, um, again, K facet fabrics, um, lovely. That one's been made quite a while, but the pink chairs haven't been made that long. This is an interesting one to talk about though, because this chair, I think the blue looks great on the pink, I hope you agree. Now, a few years ago I made um, a flying goose quilt. It's on the channel, it's somewhere uh, back in the, in, the, uh, in the playlist somewhere. And I used Merchant and Mills fabric, which is, uh, those do beautiful fabrics, all different sorts of fabrics. But this particular line that they do is uh, Indian block printed fabric. It's absolutely beautiful. And so I made that flying goose quilt and I had lots and lots of little bits left over. Now I pieced, um, th these are the same size squares, and I pieced these squares together, always imagining that I would make a cushion for the sitting room. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought it really would look nice on a chair. The back of this one here is, um, I'll take it off so that you can see it. You could almost turn it round, couldn't you? This is loads and loads of stripey bits. But the back of it is striped fabric, uh, all pieced together so that it's got a lovely kind of crazy uh, kind of uh, form to it. And then this one here has got some of the Merchant and Mills um, block printed fabric for the back here. You never see the back, but it's nice to make something of the back. And I finished this one only a few days ago which is what made me think that I needed to keep going and finish this one. So this is the one I've just finished. Uh, these lovely greens that go beautifully, these sort of yellowy greens that go beautifully with the yellow of the chair. And I think as a set of four, they look great together. I, I'm really pleased that I finally got them all how I want them to look. No. So in the original series about these chairs, I made socks for their feet. Of course I did, because it stops them from scratching the floor. And why wouldn't you want socks on your chairs? Now, I haven't got enough socks, so I need to start knitting some socks again for chairs. I need to knit quite a lot of socks. So that's going to be the next task, and then the chairs really will be finished when they've all got their socks on and they're all sitting around the table in the kitchen. <laughs> I'm very, very pleased with this finish. There's a very big tick I can do off my to-do list. The chair cushions and the cushion backs were English paper pieced. They didn't need to have been. I could quite easily have sewn those on the machine, but I really do enjoy English paper piecing. And so I got that degree of accuracy by using papers and piecing those squares. But normally I wouldn't piece squares by hand like that. I'd do them on the machine. Now, 2022 was also a, the year that a project that I, me and my son John have been working on, working towards since the middle of the pandemic. And John's my son. And he 
at Works With Wood. And when he got the chance to get a beautiful mature pear tree that had been blown down uh, in a big storm, it just grows about, I don't know, a mile, mile and a half from me. That was when the idea for the Dish and the Spoon project was conceived. And it was a lot of really lovely videos that I got to make with three very talented friends of mine who make, one of them is a spoon turner. No, one of them is a spoon carver. She doesn't turn spoons, she carves them. One of them is an amazing potter. And the other, Louise, is a fantastic illustrator and ceramicist. And these are my good friends. And I asked them to get involved in this project. Now, it took a long time to bring everything together. A long time. And then we were able to offer the dish and the spoon boxes to people who wanted them. And I'm just really sorry that the project was such that we couldn't make enough to satisfy the need for them. I'm really sorry, but I hope that the people who did get them really, really enjoyed their dish and their spoon box. There was a video about the spoon carving, another about the firing of the bowls, the turning and firing of the bowls, and then a visit to Louise's beautiful house where she uh, did some of the illustrations for us. And then Anna and I uh, packed all the boxes up to send away to you. Fantastic. I really enjoyed that project. It was, it was just such a great project to do. Now I'm on the next run and I'm just going to scoot the quilt. This is the nice thing about doing the short uh, side of the quilt is that I can reach it from one side to the other. So I'll get my thread. and Like I say, I'm going to cut the length I need. I don't need to, to do this uh, any shorter. Oftentimes when I'm stitching, people ask me, what kind of needle are you using? And I'm not really a needle snob as such. This year, though, I really got into bowhin needles, which Kath, the long arm quilter, got me interested in doing. Uh, but uh, I don't know what this is. It was just a nice needle with a sharp point and a decent sized eye to get this 12 or a fill 12 through. So I do apologise if I'm not very... Um, not very good at telling you what um, what my needles are. 
this is my maybe New Year's resolution. Get better at needles in 2023. <laughs> maybe. Now I get my, I'll just pull it towards me slightly. And when I get back to this end, now that I know that that runs okay, I just snip off the knot from there and it gets buried in the um, border. Now, a lot of people have asked me what I'm going to do with these uh, borders. This lovely teal colour that's uh, around the edges of the quilt. And all the while that I'm hand quilting this, I'm thinking about that. I'm wondering whether I should continue the stitching on into the border in the same grid pattern or do something different. I haven't decided. That's what I love about um, quilting, especially some a project like this one that's been going on for so long. I can just make my mind up as I go and uh, make decisions about how I'm going to do this as I'm going along. So now then I'm going to get the next, the start of the next run ready with my chalk pencil. Here we go. And using a ruler like this means that I can line it up really carefully so that the line doesn't go wonky. It's hardly likely to go wonky on a one inch hexagon, which is what these are. But, you know, I've spent all this time doing this. We're not going to um, fail at the last hurdle. <laughs> so I'm going to lift the border up, pop my needle where it needs to be. And there we go. That'll do nicely. OK, and we're off on the next one. So the Dish and the Spoon was a midsummer project. Happened around about summertime. Let's see what else we were doing. Oh, I know what else happened in the summer. I went to the Festival of Quilts. I'd been planning to go to the festival for a while. And I only went for two days, which was a mistake. This next year coming, when I go, I'm going to go for longer. Because I had an absolutely brilliant time brilliant. I got to meet Kay Fassett and Brandon Mabley and Chris English and I got to talk that they were really generous with their time and I did some properly good interviews with them and but then I got very very tired because I was trying to do everything all in two days so I think this year this next year coming I'm going to go for longer and take my time and not worry too much about um, trying to fit everything in uh, all in a couple of days. It was all, also, just as an aside, there was a problem with the rail network at the time and trains were being cancelled and postponed and I was subject to some of that. So I didn't get to stay as long as I could have because I had to come home in time for one of these trains. That was a shame. But the it what the visit to... The, oh, I keep saying, Kate... What the visit to the festival, I think, has done, it's really spurred me on to, um, well, to some new ideas for quilts. There's, there's a bunch of fabric that I brought back. It's just sitting in a bag over there that's going to be a new idea for next year. Very excited to be showing you that one. Uh, sometime in the new year, I'll get that one out. Uh, but it also gave me the idea that I would enter some quilts. I think I might enter this one, the uh, Agnes's quilt, uh, to the festival next year. Uh, I hope so. It's not till August, and so that's an awfully long time away. And a lot can happen between now and August, but we'll see. I'm really looking forward to going again. It's very busy here at the Festival of Quilts. <laughs> And I feel a bit of a twit filming, but I'm going to do it anyway. So let's go for a walk.
having a lovely time wandering around the Festival of Quilts and I've just met Chris. Hi. Hi, and I'm going to chat with Chris. We're having camera issues and so you might not have us both in frame, but we'll see what happens. We'll make it work. Um, well, we'll try, if we, unless we can get someone to film it for us. Okay, so, oh, you little angel. Thank I you. have got someone to film it for me. So thank you very much indeed, yeah, mystery you. lady. <laughs> uh, so Chris. Hi. Talk. So this is my quilts, it's in contemporary. I make a lot of my quilts from recycled fabrics. I just bought this. Right. I have no idea why, because right. I have so much fabric at home and so mm. much of your fabric. Mm. And I do a lot. Uh, so what I wanted to ask you was your colours, your designs, your patterns all speak for themselves. Mm. Your quilt designs are very, very simple. Yeah. So I'd just be interested to hear you say a little bit about that because that's what I love about yeah. your quilts. Right. Well, the th what I try to do with my quilts is to make them very simple to construct and also because then it shows off the print and the color. So I'm trying to, you know, give us a nice square or a big diamond so that you get to the big scale of the fabric and it isn't too chopped up into tiny little exactly. pieces that are fiddly to do. I like I like that to be simple because what I feel is our fabrics are kind of baroque. Exactly. You know, they speak as you say, speak for themselves. They they're dramatic. In this last year we lost our queen. She died at the age of 96, 97, amazing age, and she'd been on the throne for decades. In fact, in the summer, we celebrated her jubilee. And I got, uh, I was contacted by the art gallery in London, the Tate, to do a collaboration with them. It was amazing, actually, to be selected to do that. And I was very excited to do it. And Anna and I uh, got together some fantastic fabrics that would be just the kind of... Um, colours and patterns that would go with one of the artworks at the Tate and we made this amazing bunting uh, which I then sent to them and they have it now hanging up in their office at the Tate. I really enjoyed getting uh, getting to grips with that project. This lovely picture, Azalea Garden by colours are so nice. Patrick Heron. How I decided to approach it was I'm going to get all my immediate scraps, this is not my entire stash by any means, but all my bits and pieces of fabric. And we're going to make some bunting to decorate the pavilion. That's what this is for. But I'm going to just, looking at the picture, I'm just going to choose randomly all these little bits and pieces of fabric. And if they look like they fit in, they get put into the pile in the middle. Yeah, that was perfect. All the colours. Perfect. Okay. So do you want to spend a minute or two doing that, Anna? Yeah, sure. Doesn't matter where you get them from. There's our reference right there. Okay. Okay. That's cool. But it's, no. not, it's too, too no. much. I like that the yellow, though. I do. So just a second. Mm. Just let's move those uh, over here because they're possibles. All right. So we'll have a no pile and a yes pile. All right? Yeah. Okay. Um, that's a yes. That's in the yes pile. This is uh, Tula Pink's... Um, one of her range and I used this for the back of a quilt last year and have a, have a bit left over. If we do it like that we're going to be uh, here a long time. <laughs> but would you say that one fits in? If we look at this lovely picture no. here, it's got some of these lovely oranges over here. Do you think? I think it's a bit too, a bit too, too vibrant. Orange. Too orange, yeah. okay, too orange. Because the right. colours in this one are much the more muted. They might be kind of muted, aren't yeah. they? Okay. Which you're going to struggle with. We, I am going to struggle <laughs> with muted because there's not a lot of... Well, you have that I'll box that then one. and we'll have our reference there, just yeah. there, so we can see it.
When I'm stitching like this, I use this, this thimble, this little plastic neoprene thimble thing that is also from Clover. I'm not sponsored by Clover, but they have got some good products. And this one, uh, it comes in three different sizes, this thimble, uh, and three different colours. And the pink one is the middle size, and that's the one that works for me. And I... Um, I, I don't even I'm not even aware that I've got it on it's so comfortable uh, but I can't stitch without it because it uh, it just um, helps me to drive that needle through those three layers but when I am stitching like this this driving through finger gets really sore and so when I'm doing a long run like I did when I did these ones here I did this in uh, the the cross pieces the long way did them over the course of a couple of days because at the end of this year the, the last few weeks of this year I took some time off and uh, my dad died and uh, I wanted to spend some time with my extended family and uh, making sure that um, that the we respected the way that we said goodbye to my dad and then after that it was uh, felt like um, I just needed some time off and so during that time off I was stitching on this it's a very cathartic thing to do stitching you just I say this over and over again we almost need it on a t-shirt you get out of your head and into your hands and any kind of overthinking or or worrying or fretting that might be going on just disappears when you're not stitching when you're quilting when you're stitching sewing uh, knitting crochet whatever it is you like to do whatever you get involved with with your hands uh, that gives you um, the opportunity to you, you know you don't stop thinking but uh, it, it, it dilutes down the worrying I think anyway sometimes I just do it a bit too much and I got a very very sore finger <laughs> So I have to have a quilting break. But then you can use different muscles and do some knitting, which I've been finding enjoyable. I'm knitting something for Agnes at the moment that will be for her next year. And it nearly is next year. <laughs> so let's have a look at another clip, shall we? What have I got on my list? I got this idea to make a jacket out of some old jeans. I've been looking at patterns like this on the internet and on Pinterest and all over the shop for a long time. And I have a lot of jeans um, just in a pile in my workroom. And so the Hanten jacket was born. And I'll tell you, borrow jacket, Hanten, whatever you want to call it, I'll tell you what I absolutely loved about making that jacket was that after I did the first episode of that there was such a lot of really great comments came in and it really did alter what I then went on to do and also my friend Lindsay was very generous in sending me lots of threads and lots of fabrics for me to make the lining and so what I ended up with was a, a jacket that I really really love wearing now I made it because I thought it might be a, a sort of spring summer jacket but it actually turned out to be a little bit more heavy weight than that so I've been able to wear it at all times of the year which might mean that next year I have to make myself a spring and summer jacket but the jacket turned out better than I could have imagined because I got all these really great tips and inspiration from you guys so thank you very very much for that uh, so have a little look at the hand end jacket and how that came together let's start with this piece this is the legs of two jeans and um, when I unpicked this one this is actually the hem of this one I left all these little funky bits of blue at the top here and I've stitched this one together by using um, a little slip of this Indian fabric here. This green Indian fabric. So I'm going to probably just pin them up where they would go on the jacket itself. So that one, don't worry about the neck. I'm thinking about how the neck should be. So that one's sort of there. So that one will sort of go there as one front. 
and then this piece here and this is what I was talking about with the taking off the pocket and finding that lovely uh, dark blue there so I've got that as a feature and stitched these together we can have a closer look at these in a minute this is an, the second front like so Now this is um, one of the sleeves, so if you imagine I've used the bottom of the jeans for the hem of the sleeve, so if you imagine that's like that, but if it was this one, it's got this lovely little piece of fabric sewn into there, so this one's a sleeve here. And I'm going to lay it out, opened out. Now this second sleeve here, which I stitched together with some stripy fabric, but I also started some of this embroidery. So this is this Sashiko embroidery, and I just did this little grid effect. I have this water erasable pen that I, 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 um, I very carefully drew it out onto, and then that just dissolves when you do the stitching over the top of it. So that's a second sleeve there and that one would go there. I'm running out of pins. Got some pins here. But this new design board is really furry and it holds on to even heavy stuff like denim. So that one's the second sleeve. These are the two fronts. And then the back is in one piece. And so here it is. I've pieced together lots of squares of, of old jeans with all these lovely different colours. And I did this on my sewing machine so that there's quite a few sewing lines on here. And I left that frayed edge there. And again, this is the bottom of the pairs of jeans here to, to create the hem. And then up towards the top, I, I put a big block of this fabric in here. And so I'm going to have to pin this up. I might have to step on my stool to pin this one up because I'm going to pin it up upside down, meeting up with the, meeting up with the shoulders. That's approximate. Well, it's not, is it? No, hang on. I'll just move it off to one side because that's not lining up well. That's better. There we go. I'm pleased with it. And so, I like that bit too. That's one of my favourite bits on the outside of the jacket. Ready for anything. This last year there's been another project that I am really enjoying seeing come together and this is teaching my daughter-in-law Anna who works with me teaching her how to understand more about quilting and so we've got this series that's like um, Anna learns to quilt or make a quilt with Anna and um, now 
I will tell you that the very first video back in 2023 will be an update on that project. Uh, we're working on it at the moment, Anna and I. And um, you'll be thrilled to know that she's got the fabrics that we were hoping to get. Really thrilled about that. And that the project is coming together really beautifully. But look at how it all started and all the phases there were to get to this point. So talk to me a bit about the Little Women quilts. In fact, let's just say right from the start that you what you've got is a Pinterest board. Yes. Yeah, now I've got a few quilts, Pinterest boards, but this one is a specific Little Women quilts, Pinterest board. Uh, is this it? Yeah, and... Uh, oh. oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, dear. It's in messages. So can... It's Okay, sorry about this, guys. <laughs> we'll find it for us. There now, I won't touch it. Okay, and I haven't added anything to, to this for a while, so it's quite interesting having a look. Um, and they're all very different, aren't they? It's sort of like little little bits from... I think the sense I get, though, mm. is the style and the colours and the yeah. form. Mm -hmm. I've decided to come at it from the point of constructing the block that you want. Mm -hmm. uh, and so today, what we've got on the table here now, this box here is a, a load of stuff that I brought back when I was clearing my mum's sewing room after she died. And I've got all these um, lilac-y prints here, none of which I'm particularly uh, enamoured with. What about you? Not a fan. No, I'm like not it. a fan of them at all. Mm. However, they're very, very good for practice fabrics, for practicing blocks, putting colours together. And mm. so what my suggestion to Anna was that we would make the block that uh, is the one you've chosen from that Pinterest board uh, so that we so that we make a start. So it's really like, um, yeah, just a little bit like bonkers liberty. Well, when Anna showed me um, the website uh, for this uh, particular designer, I realised straight away why you'd be drawn to it. It's all your colours and patterns, mm. isn't it? And quite 70s, isn't it? Like I guess it is a little bit, yeah. Yeah, the kind of oranges and... So we are now down that particular rabbit hole <laughs> trying to find that fabric for Anna in the mm. quantities that we need. Now, we're going to put a lot of effort into accurately making this quilt block, Anna, because I've got an idea about what I might do with it afterwards. It Good. won't go to waste at all. Yeah. Uh, What's the idea? The secret? I think it might be secret for now. <laughs> I might tell you. Oh, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> And the only thing really to remember is that we've got two different blocks, but in your final quilt, when we've got your fabric and you're making these, mm. you will have an endless variety. Yeah. I think she's doing brilliantly. I really do. And what I like as well is just how much she's enjoying it. Um, she's really got the bug and we'll make a quilter of her yet. <laughs> I'm very pleased. It's going to be a gorgeous quilt. Just you wait till you see the fabrics that uh, that she's got, and how and how they're coming together. Not at all the colour palette I thought she would choose. Beautiful. Another lovely thing that happens in the summer and has become a bit of a ritual here at the last homely house is John's my son's birthday cake. Every year I make him a birthday cake, and this year was no different. But what I really loved about this year's birthday cake was that um, my granddaughter Agnes and her mum and dad came and uh, we sat outside. There's no way anyone could sit outside on a day like today. But we sat outside. It was uh, Ju June, July time. And we taught Agnes all about thumbs up. Give us a thumbs up, Agnes. <laughs> And she tried really, really hard to manage to do that thumbs up. 
So I'll mention that now. If you're enjoying this video, give it one of Agnes's thumbs up. <laughs> that would be brilliant. So I wonder what I'll make for John's cake next year. <laughs> I really do enjoy doing it. Staying in the summertime, which is really nice to do on the last day of the year. Anna and I make a calendar every year and we try to take some interesting photographs inside the last homey house, round and about, uh, just to make uh, a real lovely mix of pictures. And one of the pictures in this year's calendar, 2023, just coming, is the photographs that Anna took uh, when she came here to the last homely house at half past four in the morning, in summertime, when, um, for the dawn, <laughs> above and beyond the call of duty, I think, Anna? Anyway, we had a dawn walk and then we sat in the pavilion, Anna and I, and had a very, very early breakfast. And we got the pictures we wanted for the calendar, but we also got some lovely film of the dam next to the house at that time of year. It was just, it's beautiful to think of it then. It's beautiful now, the lake's completely frozen and the ice is sparkly and all the crystals are really beautiful and shimmery. But it was, it's lovely to revisit what it did look like six months ago. Hello, YouTube friends. It's really, really early on a summer's morning. And Anna and I have planned this. She's come this morning to take some photographs that we might end up using on the calendar. And so we, talk, we thought we'd take this opportunity to have a little look around the garden. It's pretty magical at this time of day. Must be about 5, 5.30, something like that. And although the sun's up already, the light is really beautiful. And the garden looks stunning in this early morning light. So Anna and I will do the work that we want to do but we also thought we'd bring you along for a look round the garden. I really love this time of year. I thought from the treehouse balcony that I might see down into the garden but the trees have grown up so much that it's just a whole mass of beautiful greenery out there. And just glimpse the pavilion in the distance. sight for this quilt which is um, well it's a bit sad really because I've loved loved making it absolutely loved making it but that does mean that I researched and have started my latest hand pieced quilt now I thought about a lot of different um, patterns and designs before I picked this one 
and this is the progress this is the basket that's the progress about it and I'm making a quilt that's called the plus quilt and so uh, with these little so the the individual pieces are like this it's another English paper pieced project that ends up like this and then these all fit together like this and it may take me as long as this one's taken. I don't mind if it takes me another three years to do. It's going to be the sort of thing that I just have in a basket next to me and stitch a couple together whenever I feel like it. And so this project then is going to take me a long time. I mean, this is this project's not quite finished yet. And my granddaughter Agnes is about to be three. So... I don't know how long this one's going to take. I have an idea in my head that it will be all the colours of the rainbow. Everything, right? I've got a lot of red ones and orange ones put together at the moment. Uh, and I've been playing around with how they look. But I would like it to wash through to greens and blues and purples and all those colours in this really kind of bold um, way with the crosses. Where's a plain one? Here's a plain one. There we go. So we get those coming together like that. So the plus quilt is a new quilt that's on the go, but there's also another quilt that I'm making out of scraps. And I discovered a channel, uh, Terry Rowland, and I'm making these little squares, just like she described. So I made a video about that as well. And I think that uh, you might be able to have a look at that now getting all your little bits, strips prepped first and a big basket of scraps beside you here means that you can just keep going and going and eventually you'll end up with a great big pile like this, which we're going to now put uh, uh, the iron over. So we'll do that next. And this is the most fun ever. This is what I'm loving about this quilt. I like the construction very much, but I really, really enjoy the jigsaw that I've created here with all these little pieces. enjoyed that retrospective look at the last year of the last homely house this next year coming is going to be lovely I've got all sorts of plans of things that I want to do here on the channel and also like I do every year I kind of relaunch the tiers over on my patreon channel and there's going to be some new and interesting things happening over there now, tomorrow, um, on the 1st of January, uh, you'll be able to watch the um, the launch of those new tiers over on Patreon. But I'll make that available for everyone, not just patrons. So you'll be able to see what it is uh, that I'm doing over there. I post every week to Patreon. Uh, I post a monthly diary. Uh, there's, As I say, there's a few new features coming that I think people will enjoy. And uh, it's a really lovely, friendly place to be. And so for the price of a posh cup of coffee or a craft magazine, you can uh, hang out with my patrons over there on Patreon uh, every week. Uh, so going forward on YouTube, I'm just going to post uh, videos here about all the projects that I've got in my head. There are so many uh, projects that I want to talk to you about. Uh, Anna and I have been busy doing some planning for all of those things. The shop's pretty empty at the moment uh, because people have been uh, very kindly buying the jigsaws, buying the calendars, so there are no, none of those left now. 
But uh, as the um, post office starts to deliver things again in the new year, there are still some little books and cards and a few things like that left in the shop. We have plans for the shop too this year. There's going to be all sorts of really interesting things in there. Uh, so look out for those too. Now, over on my website, you can sign up for a, a monthly newsletter. Just once a month, we write a newsletter. And in it, I tell you who, which charity uh, benefits from ad revenue that is uh, generated here on my YouTube channel. If you've been here for a long time, you may know that um, I never wanted to monetize the channel. And it was a decision that was taken out of my hands because YouTube um, changed their policy and made me do that. But every month I donate um, money to a different charity. Um, and, you know, I will tell you about it in the newsletter. So there's that. Uh, also, over on Instagram, there's loads of hashtags where you can share your um, creative processes uh, with anyone who's interested. Um, all these people who are sitting on the lime green sofa, I know you're all there. <laughs> so if you're new here and you don't know what I mean by the lime green sofa, let me explain. Way back, um, around about the pandemic really, I c came up with the idea that my community, you lovely people subscribed here to The Last Tony House, were a little bit like uh, friends of mine who were sitting on my sofa, right here or right here. But then that sofa goes all the way around the world, goes absolutely everywhere around the world. And so um, if you're on the lime green sofa, you're one of my subscribers, then there's a Facebook page for you over on uh, Facebook and there are admins there. I don't visit Facebook, but there are admins who will look after you if you search for The Last Homely House East of the Sea. You'll be able to join the Facebook page. Uh, you need to answer a key question, but I have said the answer to that question a couple of times in this video. So you should know who that is when you go to answer the question, if it's the same question. OK, so I've told you about all the different things that I do here at The Last Homely House. And uh, I hope that in 2023, you'll join me for more of those. I'm really looking forward to getting back into the swing of making videos again, posting videos and um, getting some interesting content created for you all for the next year. It's going to be amazing. So have a fabulous 2022 New Year's Eve and have a wonderful, happy New Year with lots of love from me at the last homely house. Take care, everybody. Mm.